Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for attending this session. Um, the purpose of my talk um, this afternoon is um, to share with you the insights that we have developed um, when we were teaching uh, and learning in an environment uh, that has to do with uh, uncertainty. So um, where actually the future uh, is not an extension of the past. Um, and I wanted to take this occasion to share with you the insights that we have developed because it is something um, that Patrick and I, Patrick is my colleague, uh, that we um, are very um, intrigued about. Uh, but before doing so, um, I would like to ask you to um, just go to a Mentimeter that uh, Maria is now sharing in the chat, um, where you can, as a, as a way of a warm up, um, share a little bit of your experience um, in a learning context. Okay, so we give you um, five minutes or maybe a few minutes. Three minutes. I don't. I don't recall, Maria, how much we said that we would. A um, couple of minutes. I'm sure we'll be fine. As yeah. long as we see um, responses coming in, it means that people are engaging. Yes. That will. Okay. And you should be able to see. Yes. Also fantastic. You're seeing responses coming through. For, the, for those that just joined, I'm going to put the link in the chat again. There's a Mentimeter link for you to answer a couple of questions. And I'll let, is it true that they can answer the questions as they go through? So they, you're, uh, you're yes. not... No, 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 no. They can answer the questions as they go through. So what I'm sharing um, right now is, is um, the consolidated uh, results so far. So um, I'm just Good. very quickly um, looking over it. Um, I should have used the same word cloud as Patrick was using this morning. Um, but, yeah, but, I must, yeah, but I must say that um, the answers are kind of uh, in line uh, with what other people in during other sessions are, are answering. So. Um, <laughs> Obviously, um, when you're learning at your best, you're in the flow, you're uh, feeling enlightened, uh, enjoying, excitement. Uh, voila. Um, and then if we go to the last question, um, so if you have to put a dot on the triangle. Yep. Okay. So, um, <laughs> Thank you for sharing your responses. So um, in the uh, in essence of time, I think I will move on with the actual presentation that I prepared. Um, so the, if the experience that I wanna share, uh, as I said earlier on, comes from the fact um, that we are currently uh, living in a world where there is a lot of uncertainty. Um, to paraphrase uh, Nassim Taleb, never in history was knowledge about the past so irrelevant for understanding the future. Um, it feels like building bridges while we are walking on it. And um, needless to say here that, of course, in this type of learning and dealing with that uncertainty, that um, creativity is an important part of um, our learning. So being creative is, uh, is, is in essence. But how do we um, learn in a constantly changing world? How do we teach um, things that are hard for ourselves to grasp? Um, how do you teach people um, to uncover new ways of working uh, that are not extensions of the past? 
um, to answer all those questions and um, from what we um, gathered from our experience is that learning um, needs to have following uh, characteristics. On the one hand, it needs to be um, open-ended. So we're not longer in a traditional situation and traditional teaching situation where the teacher knows it all, has a fixed program, where we have a kept um, knowledge that we want to teach people. Um, no, in the environment that we are in today, um, it needs to be open. Um, what is key is that we need to learn how to learn uh, to unlock actually the continuous learning that needs to happen. And um, to paraphrase um, John Sturman, what he said is that um, we cannot teach people. The only thing what we can do is create an opportunity for them to, uh, to learn for themselves. The second um, characteristic um, that is really very key in, in, um, in if you are dealing with uncertainty is um, also focus on, on learning. So not only adding, adding, adding new learnings, but um, as the future is no longer an extension of the past, it also means that certain beliefs, old beliefs that we had developed or bad habits that we had developed, that we need to uh, unlearn them, let, let go of them. And um, that way we will create um, room um, yeah, in our head for new learnings. And then thirdly, um, the learning needs to be integrated. So the, the learning journey is no longer um, a person that uh, attends a class or a training. Just coming to a class is not enough anymore. You need to um, integrate it in your day-to-day -day activities. You need to do it, you need to practice it, you need to experiment with it. Um, so uh, you can't divide the thinking um, from the doing. Now, there are um, three forms of um, learning that we identified that play a key role in it. And the first one is um, what we call free play. So um, as you can see from the metaphors that I'm using, we got inspired by uh, sports and especially team sports. Now the um, mental picture that I'm using there of the kids running behind the ball um, might um, give a negative uh, impact of free, um, or a negative impression of free play. And that can be the case, of course, when you are under uh, too much pressure. Um, for example, free play um, can lead to bad habits or free play can just be running around behind the ball, just purposeless, not knowing what you're doing. But um, at its best, free play can actually be very uh, useful, very strong in the sense that um, it can stimulate creativity. Uh, if you um, foresee enough diversity um, in, in the free play situations, um, if uh, the pressure is right, um, it can create uh, excellence. And even when you are, for example, playing together, um, or in, in our world, it's not playing, but it's working together with a peer who has um, a little bit better skills in something else, um, it can help you improve your skills. The second one um, is probably the one that uh, within um, knowledge work, uh, we are the most familiar with. Um, uh, the more traditional uh, way of, of, of learning, going to a training course um, where people will teach you about the new practices and principles that come with methods. Um, but again, to fall back on the metaphor of the, the kids, um, going through a certain drill uh, that their coach has, has, uh, has defined for them. Worst case, uh, it will create road behavior, just people uh, just going through the motions, um, not actually developing or, or really uh, with the intent to develop skills. But at its best, um, going through the motions over and over again can actually offload your memory uh, and create room for creativity. 
And um, I cannot say it better than, than Tiger Woods, of course, saying no matter how good you get, you can always get better. Uh, and that's an exciting part. So that's um, isolated practice can be really uh, beneficial in that um, sense. But both forms um, that I just um, explained have, um, yeah, in, in, in the world of today, um, are probably not sufficient anymore. They have um, a kind of lack. Um, and that is why we are so much uh, triggered by what is currently um, heavily used in team sports uh, training tactics, and that is constraint-led uh, learning. So that's actually using uh, constraints as a boundary in which um, players, but we are um, we are using it in our uh, teaching uh, teaching uh, journeys, um, where we use uh, constraints as boundaries in which uh, people have to start being creative um, of creating new solutions um, and, and start thinking about how to deal with, with, with those constraints. Um, in sports, it's easy to think about uh, when kids are playing in a small area game. So that means that they need to be um, start being creative, not looking at the ball, but looking around at who they can pass, quickly make them nervous. It's the same thing in a working environment. Um, if we tell people, um, for example, um, to limit their work in progress, suddenly people will have to start being creative um, to start being able to, to, um, to deal with that constraint. Um, so in, in that particular case, it might enable collaboration in a team, for example. But you have, you have uh, in work environments also other examples like um, the key men, uh, uh, I, the, 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 yeah, the bottleneck in your team, for example, never starts work alone. Uh, so that will develop also um, other solutions, other possibilities um, in your in your situation. So, at best, um, it creates those novel solutions, those new solutions. Um, it will also help with unlearning bad habits, which was one of the the key elements that I pointed out earlier on. But of course, there's also a downside on it. Um, if you are not putting the right boundaries, you're not um, doing a good analysis of what the obstacles are that you want to uh, address, then um, these small area games can just be playing games uh, with not delivering new insights, with not um, enabling new behavior. So that's the, the downside of it. Now, um, these forms of learning, we're not saying that one form of learning um, is more important um, than the other form. They all three are, are, are equally important, um, but you need to be, uh, they need to be present, um, all three of them, when you are uh, thinking of a learning journey. So uh, as I said earlier, going to a class, um, and so doing an isolated practice is simply not enough because in reality, uh, it might be that what you have just learned in a class is conflicting uh, with what is presently present. So that means that in your environment, you have to start being creative. You have to start, for example, using constraints to start um, seeing how you can apply what you just learned in your reality. That might then at this turn um, require that you start doing, 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 doing um, to, to gather experience and to come, become better in it. And that might uh, open the opportunity again to start learning about new practices or uh, new things. So they're equally important. And um, uh, again, when you are designing a learning journey, you should um, or at least that is our experience and that's our insight that we want to share, you should um, have attention for the three of them to incorporate them in, in a learning journey. Um, I see that I'm doing quite well. So um, I can actually uh, ask you now to maybe um, do a uh, another exercise. Um, Maria, do you have the, the link for the cool down to share? Yes, of course. Let's do that one. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, 
So if you can go to the Mentimeter again and then do the cool down exercise. which is taking maybe a little bit longer, this one. Um, and if you, if you do it, um, please uh, talk about um, a learning journey in, in a work context, in a context that has to do with knowledge work. So also a few minutes. I'm especially interested in finding out what people um, during that learning journey unlearned, but I see nobody answering that question yet. <laughs> I can see that a um, few people had to let go of old beliefs or certain beliefs. Okay. Okay, um, I'm just looking at the time. I still have 10 minutes left. Um, there's one person and that's, uh, or two persons now um, that uh, on the second question, what kind of learning was that? Uh, so I see two people actually who are um, responding, uh, constraint enabled learning. Um, those who responded that, can they just quickly tell me what kind of constraint uh, it was? Hi, it's Afia. So <clears throat> for me, it was the time constraint there is the Sorry, the time is the constraint in my learning journey. Okay. Yeah, so I have to do a certification, say, next by next month. So I have to force myself to make sure that I use my time sensibly and productively and learn. Okay. So the new behavior that was developed then is, is uh, learning to be efficient. Yes, and focus as well and see it through, Okay. not just commit and then forget about it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
good. Um, yeah, time is is uh, passing by, so I'm going back to um, to my presentation. People, I the Mentimeter will stay open, so if you want to complete it afterwards, that's fine too. Um, so to conclude um, my talk here, um, I just want to um, stimulate you. Um, to um, next time when you are involved in a uh, learning journey, either as a coach or a trainer or a, or a student, a participant, um, that you start thinking about um, what it is that um, you can learn from the participants or what uh, a participant uh, would like to learn to the rest uh, of the group and would like to um, to contribute to the training. Um, so the op uh, so um, to have more the open-endedness um, in mind. Um, and then um, when you are in, in that learning journey, um, not only focus on what you want to add as new learnings, uh, but also what you want to unlearn and make it explicit. Um, as, a, as a trainer, uh, ex explicitly tell people what they are going to unlearn um, or as a, as a participant to a training, um, have upfront for yourself an idea uh, what it is that you want to um, unlearn. And then lastly is uh, about um, the, make it an integrated learning journey. Uh, so don't think of it like uh, a one-off course, but um, really develop a learning journey in the sense like um, integrate it in the day-to-day -day activities. Uh, think about how the day-to-day -day challenges uh, that participants or that you yourself are facing, um, how that the learnings that you have had, how can they be... Um, uh, help you to tackle these these um, these day-to-day -day challenges uh, which constraints can you use um, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to to overcome to overcome these uh, challenges so to make it an integrated experience um, and if I just may take the opportunity to say like if you are curious uh, on, how uh, if you want to experience such an um, such a such a learning journey, I would like to invite you uh, to have a look at Okaloa Flolap because um, that's the learning platform that we um, are offering um, just to to help people um, to to learn and grow in uh, unknown territory. So I would like to thank you. And of course, if there are questions, I'm I'm more than happy now to. Uh... Oh, maybe a last thing that I forgot to mention is that um, if you go to our website, you can use this uh, QR code. Um, then you can download a poster uh, if you want. Okay, so if I'm correct. I have five minutes left. Well done. <laughs> Very I'm good time. I'm, I'm, I'm probably one of the uh, few people that manages to get it done in time. Um, definitely, you can get the poster for the presentation via the link I posted or the QR code. Likewise, please do send kudos to our speakers. I'm going to put a link in the chat as well so you can give kudos to Arlette. Uh, please don't forget, it's a, it's a fantastic opportunity to thank everybody for their valuable time and uh, insight, of course. And if you have any questions, please do type them up in the chat. Meanwhile... Um... Or, yeah, um, since we... I it's the end of the presentation so people can ask them they don't need to time them in the chat eh? so uh yeah go on hi Ole. um yes can you give an example of a particularly complicated integrated journey that you've seen you know something that is really extraordinary I, <laughs> uh, 
Hello, Carlo. Hi. Hello. Um, so, um, an example of an integrated journey? Yeah, a complicated um, one, one that had several items to it. Well, um, if we, I, I can tell you, um, usually if we go into a larger organization where they're in the middle of a transformation, um, the way we approach it. Um, so often um, we come in more on the, <laughs> I think I have to let Patrick answer because it's, it's... Um, no, the, the, the thing is, so if we come in, uh, usually co we come in by um, doing a, a simulation workshop uh, because the simulation workshop uh, opens the opportunity for people um, to start um, looking at um, the situation that they're in um, from a different angle. So we do bad weather scenario, we do a good weather scenario. So that um, triggers the thinking, yeah? And then um, usually people then go away and then afterwards, um, so it's it's not um, pushing training, but it's more like pull. So we want people um, from their own to come back. And then there are different, you know, um, the speed depends a little bit on where you are, but typically what happens then is that uh, people will start um, a try to apply things actually in, in, um, in their work environment. Uh, but then usually they will come back and they will say like, oh, I didn't get it very well. So then you kind of um, start uh, coaching like sessions, uh, but still use the simulations. Yeah, uh, still use the simulations. Then they will start talking about exact problems that they have. Um, like, um, I don't know what it is, but lately we have a lot of uh, infrastructure teams uh, that come to us um, because they have a particular, um, yeah, um, particular um, problem, challenge, challenge, that's the word that I was looking for. They have a, pro a particular challenge um, and which nobody has the, 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 the right answers immediately. So you start experimenting with them. Um, and you start thinking about which constraints that you can apply. Uh, and, and in that way, there, there is um, between the coach and, and the participants, there is a kind of co-creation that, that starts. So it's not the one that is uh, more um, I mean, smarter or what than the others. No, it's, it's actually co-creating together and not only with the coach and participants, but also participants participants, eh, co-workers amongst each other. Um, Patrick actually put in front of me, uh, we don't call a flow up. Um, one thing that we noticed uh, that has really a, um, a great value in learning uh, about your challenges is by co-facilitating. Because um, I, that is one thing that we figured out for ourselves by um, designing the, the simulations um we were forced um uh to be creative to start thinking to start looking at the um, the challenges that people have with end-to-end -end flow or or uh, multiple teams working together um if you start building simulations you have to start thinking differently about the and that helped us a lot and it's that kind of um uh thinking that, that we also uh, go through with, with our customers. So we, we encourage them uh, to go, we, we take them on a journey. So, yeah. And the thing is, um, it's a journey. Um, it's not an end. It's like, yeah, you, you, you explore together what is the challenge, the next challenge that you wanna uh, tackle, eh, that you wanna solve. You work around that one, and then probably when that one is done, you will face another challenge. So it's really, yeah, you go on. Voila. Um, I hope that that was an answer to your question. Not sure, Patrick, if you want to add something. No? OK. <laughs> OK, amazing.
If there are any more questions, um, you are welcome to find our letter Patrick in Velo as well. You can find them there and ask pretty much as many questions as you like as we are uh, coming to the end of the time. So I'm going to put the link yeah. to Velo here as well in case you need it. And um, yeah, that is it. Thank you so very much. Yeah. Also, thank you very much for um, attending. Thank you. Bye.